Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial on VMware vSphere 6 and in this one we're going to be installing the vCenter server appliance. So I've downloaded the vCenter server appliance ISO file here and it's a little bit different to how we install it from the previous versions. So what I'll do is I'll mount this ISO file and I'm going to run the vcsa setup.html. And as you can see here, we're presented with the install or upgrade screen. So I'll be clicking install. And from here, we're prompted with the wizard. So let's accept the license agreement. So here we'll specify our ESXi host. And I'll enter in the root username and password. And we'll click next. We'll accept the certificate. Now here we'll give the appliance a name, so I'm just going to be calling mine vCenter6. So that'll be the name of the virtual machine. And I'll give my root username a password. And just type it again. Now there's a few different deployment scenarios for the platform services controller. So it explains a little bit of information here, but I've actually brought up a web page which is the list of recommended topologies for VMware vSphere 6 and talks about the differences between an embedded platform services controller or an external platform services controller. So if you pause the video here and just write down this URL at the top or you can search in Google for list of recommended topologies for VMware vSphere 6 and it will bring you to this page. So for our demo, we're just going to be doing an embedded platform services controller. And that will consist of the single sign-on server, licensing, and certificate management. So we'll click Next. Now we'll create a new SSO domain. For our SSO administrator username, we'll enter in a password. And we'll confirm it. Now for the SSO domain name, I'm going to stick with the traditional vSphere.local. But you can enter in another domain name here if you like. So this is basically the local domain name of the SSO. So when we log into it for the first time, we will be logging into it as administrator at vSphere.local. And then we can set up our Active Directory domain integration. So for the SSO site name, I'm just going to be calling it sysadmin lab. And as you can see down here in the Warning, it says, please make sure that this SSO domain name is different to your Active Directory domain name. So we'll click Next. So here we can select how big our appliance size will be. So I'm going to be selecting tiny, up to 10 hosts. But as you can see here, we've got up to 100, up to 400, and up to 1,000 hosts. So selecting one of these appliance sizes will change the CPU, memory, and hard disk space. Now I'll select a data store where I'll be installing my vCenter 6 appliance and I'm going to enable thin disk mode here and we'll move on. Now with the vCenter 6 appliance we can either use the embedded database which is a Postgres database or use an external Oracle database. So there's no option here for SQL at this stage. So I'm just going to use the embedded database and here we'll set up our network connection so my internal network is called Home Lab Internal. We'll use IPv4, make sure it's set to static. For the IP address, I'm going to type in 192.168.1.174. And the fully qualified domain name, I'll type in vcenter6.vmlab.local. Our subnet mask will be 255.255.0. Gateway 192.168.1.1. And my DNS server will be my Active Directory domain server, which is 192.168.1.101. For NTP servers, I'll also select my domain controller. And we don't need to enable SSH at this stage. Now, before we move on, this fully qualified domain name needs to be set up in your DNS infrastructure because it's going to try to do a forward and reverse lookup of it. Uh, if you don't have it set up in your DNS server, then the installation is going to fail. So I've opened up my Active Directory domain controller here. And within my DNS, 
I'll set up a forward lookup for vCenter 6 and we'll give it an IP address and we want to make sure that we've got create associated pointer record ticked here so as you can see my IP address is 192.168.1.174 so on the left here under reverse lookup zones you want to make sure you have that subnet set up so we can see 1.168.192 which is the reverse of 192.168.1 and the reverse lookup will be placed in there if you don't have that set up clicking create associated pointer record will not actually create a pointer record and we'll click add host and we'll minimize our Active Directory server we'll click next here and here's a summary of all of our settings that we entered during the wizard so I'll click finish and the virtual machine will start to deploy now it's probably going to take a couple of minutes to deploy so what I'll do is I'll just pause the video and I'll resume it once it's complete okay we're back here and our installation has completed successfully so as we can see here, we can log into the vSphere web client. So I'm going to click on the link here and just accept the certificate. Now if you remember, during the setup, we have our username as administrator and our local vSphere domain as vSphere.local. So we'll be logging into our vCenter server with that account. And now we're successfully logged into our vCenter server. So by default, it's just going to run on a trial license. So that's why we've got this warning message up the top here. So I'm just going to close that. So what we'll do now is we'll create a new data center and then we're going to add in our ESXi 6 server. So I'm going to click on hosts and clusters and we'll right click our vCenter server and select new data center. So we'll give it a name. and click OK. So now we'll click on our data center here and I'll right click and select add host and here I'll type in the IP address so this is the IP address of my ESXi host if you have DNS set up you can also use the DNS fully qualified domain name for this here and I'll click next for the username I'm going to type in root and my password so that's the username on ESXi. So it attempts to make a connection, which it does successfully, and we're prompted here with the certificate. So I'll select yes to accept the certificate. At the moment, I don't have any virtual machines on this ESXi host. Otherwise, you'll see them listed here in this box. Now, if you have licenses within vCenter server, they will appear here, and you can allocate those licenses to your ESXi server. But because I'm running in a trial version, uh, as you can see at the bottom here, the license will expire in 60 days. So we're just going to select the evaluation license and we'll click next. So for lockdown mode, we have three options here. We have disabled, which is the default option. We have normal and we have strict. So with normal, the host is accessible only through the local console or the vCenter server. For strict, the host is accessible only through vCenter server. So there's no console access here. So with strict setup, and with the services of SSH and ESXi shell stopped, the only way to recover your ESXi server would be via a reinstall. So in this demonstration, we're just going to leave it as disabled. So we'll click next. Now this option asks where we'd like to place our virtual machines if our ESXi server was hosting some virtual machines. But because we don't have any virtual machines on our ESXi host and we haven't set up any folders or resource groups here, we'll just be selecting the data center object. So we'll click next and here's a summary of your settings so we'll click finish as you can see here also the recent tasks has moved to the bottom so it looks more like the vSphere client previously if you remember the recent tasks used to be up on the right hand side here so if we go back over to the left side and expand our data center we'll be able to see our ESXi host that we've added in and if we click on summary we get all the information from our host here so that's going to conclude this tutorial on setting up vCenter 6 appliance. I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next video.